Valley Oil Company presents Captain Advance. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at this same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Skelly, you know, was the originator of tailor-made gasoline, the famous Skelly Aromax. Gasoline that's weather right for your car. But before we begin our program tonight, I want you to hear a letter from one of Captain Midnight's enthusiastic young friends in Gary, Indiana. Listen. Dear Don Gordon. I'm just writing to tell you how much everybody in our neighborhood likes those Mexican jumping beams. And that swell game of Ringo Jumpo, too. And I mean the girls as well as the boys. We're keeping track of who wins the most games of Ringo Jumpo. And so far, the girls in our block are way ahead of the boys. And all of us think the Captain Midnight program is swell. And we're certainly glad to be members of the new 1940 Flight Patrol. Thanks a million for telling us about these free jumping beams and Ringo Jumpo games. Signed... Ellen Carmichael, Gary, Indiana. Well, say thank you for that fine letter, Ellen. And now all you other fellows and girls listening in tonight, what do you think about the girls beating the boys at Ringo Jumbo? Come on, let's hear from some more of you about that. But say, isn't it fun having those genuine Mexican jumping beans to show your friends and that swell Ringo Jumbo board to play so many exciting games on with those funny old jumping beans? You know, the Mexicans call them Bronco beans. Because of all the crazy motions they make. And you'll see why the minute you put your jumping beans in a warm place and they start to buck like a bronco. The Mexicans play games with them, too. Just like Captain Midnight's Ringo Jumpo game. And believe me, it's one swell game. Now, if you don't have your Ringo Jumpo game and your jumping beans, remember, it's dead easy to get them absolutely free. You just have the family car pull into your Skelly service station... Show the Skelly Man your Flight Patrol membership card, and he'll give you your game and your bag of jumping beans without a moment's delay. And what's more, without one cent of cost. They're absolutely free to members of Captain Midnight's Flight Patrol. Of course, if you're not yet a member, just see your Skelly Man about that, too. Get over there tonight if you can. And now to Captain Midnight. Last time you remember, Chuck Ramsey, accompanied by Patsy Donovan and the Mexican boy Pebbles, were exploring the interior of the cave in which Patsy and her mother had been taking shelter. They found an underground river, and in following along its shore, approached a roaring waterfall. Pablo told them that at the foot of the waterfall is an old Aztec temple. In the darkness and the excitement, Chuck suddenly fell into the stream. Listen as Patsy shouts above the roar of the water. Quick, Chuck, grab something! Well, there's nothing for him to hold on to, Patsy. Well, we've got to do something, Pebbles, and do it quick. But what can we do? We cannot reach him. Now, the two branches, I think they were holding. He's got to hold. Yes, they are holding. Oh, good. Chuck is 
explain yourself in, see? Good for you, son. I knew you could do it. Quick, just squeeze yourself open the rod. Oh, he can't. Not right away. He's lying against that branch and hold him up. See, I know how he feels. He's resting to regain his strength. Well, that won't take him off. Look, now he's pulling himself up. Hey, boy, Chuck, crawl out of front of those rocks. Here, he's out. See, he's looking around. He's looking this way. He sees us. Look, he waves the head. Well, now he gives us the okay signal. Stay there, Chuck. Just lie there and drink. We'll get you out. Oh, he cannot hear us. The noise of the waterfall is too loud. Now, then, we've got to find some way to get him back. But what can we do, Chuck, so we can not go out there? I know what we'll do. We'll get a rope. I know the very one. It belongs to your uncle. Red and Chuck used it to pull the plane out of the mud. Well, see, Cassie, but how do we get the rope to Chuck? That's easy, Cassie. We'll tie one end of the rope to a piece of wood. Pull out the rope so it has plenty of slack. Then throw the wood out into the center of the tree. The curve will carry it down so the wood will be trapped on the far side of the island. Well, see. With the other end fastened here, Chuck can't fail to get hold of it. Now, listen. You stay here and watch. Keep waiting to Chuck and encouraging him while I run for the rope. Well, got the rope and the entrance to the cave, and no one has seen me. Uh oh. Well, oh, there's Slim and Pinky. Hi there, Patsy. Well, if it ain't my old pal, Patsy Dobbin. What you doing for yourself? Hello, Slim. Hello, Pinky. I'm sure glad to see you. We got a couple of hours off, and your parade had taken our place. We thought we'd come and show it a fat with you and Chuck and that friend of yours. Uh, what's his name? Oh, you mean Pebbles. Yeah, yeah that's it. I couldn't think of that air long mouthful. What in the heck are you doing, Patsy? You was running like you was going to a fire, and you're all out of breath. And what are you doing with that air rope? You're going to last all few steers? <laughs> you can always touch that air truck Ramsey to be trying something. Uh, what is it this time? Oh, uh, uh, listen, Slim. Listen, Pinky. You've got to help us. Chuck's in trouble. Bad trouble. Trouble, you say, Patsy? By the great grizzly. What kind of trouble? You can count on Slim and me. You sure can, Patsy. You know that. Well, hurry, then, and come with me quick. Hey, look. There's Captain Midnight. We'll get him, too. Oh, no. Don't. Don't go. Hey, hey, Red. Come here, quick. Chuck's in trouble. What? What did you say, Pinky? What's happened? Where's Chuck? Well, we don't know, Red. You better ask Patsy. Well, what's the matter, Patsy? What are you doing with that rope? Well, Red, uh, I wasn't going to bother you. Wait, could... Patsy. Quick, tell me. Has something happened to Chuck? Is he in danger? He is, Red. Oh, well, we can save him if we hurry. Come on, hurry, and I'll tell you about it on the way. There he is. There's Chuck and here's Pebbles. Oh, it's you, Pepsi. I think you will never come. Oh, and you're in front of me, Captain Slim, and that's your good friend Slim and Pinky. Well, great day. How does Chuck ever get out there? Never mind that now, Slim. What's your idea, Patsy? What about the rope? Well, here's my plan. To tie the end of the rope to a small piece of wood, and then throw the wood as far out as possible. If we get it out far enough, the current will carry it on the far side of the island. And with the other end back in here, the rope will stretch tight between here and the island. Oh, that's using your head, Patsy. That's just what I was going to suggest. Quick, let's find a piece of wood. Oh, hear me, Captain. I have already found a thing. Oh, that's the stuff, Pebbles. Here it is. Oh, that's fine, fine. That's what we want. A foot long and heavy enough to have a little weight. Now, that head. Just tie the end of the rope to it like this. One more. Yeah, there now. It's time to pull out plenty full, Red. Or we'll have to do it over. Slim here is an expert at that. Good. All right, Slim, here you are. Okay, Red. You got that rope all coiled, Patsy? Sure, Slim. It's coiled so it'll all come free. All right, and I've got the other end. Good. Now, let me have that rope, Patsy. Here you are. Now, here we go now. I'm starting to coil. Oh, look at him with the rope, Patsy. This Slim has luck on the ball. Look at that thing swirl around. It's going so fast I can hardly see. Now, then. Here you go. Oh, good blow, Slim. By the great grizzly. Look at that. It almost went over to the other bank. Yes, the current's swiftly on that side, too. It's a lucky thing Chuck didn't fall in there. Look, the wood is almost there. Hey, look. What's Chuck doing? Hey, Chuck. Chuck, don't do that. He's standing up on a piece of rock. Now he's trying to get in the water. Hold it, Chuck. Don't do that. He's all in the water. Look, he's coming up. He's made it. He's got the piece of wood. He's trying to rope around his waist. All right, all right. Come on now, everybody. Pull on this rope. We'll have him out of there in a jiffy. Be careful of that cram, Chuck. Don't let him drag you under. Keep playing as we go. And now, leaving the rescue of Chuck to his friends, we turn again to the underground passage beneath the parade of Hacienda. Ive and Chuck and his Lieutenant Cardo 
are creeping stealthily toward Dolores Parada, who is kneeling by an open chest. A flickering candle gives a weird, dismal light. Listen to sharp whispers. Wait, Gardo. Wait. Yeah. Hey, look at her, Chief. What's she doing? She's swaying, Gardo. Look. She's falling down. Yeah. Quick, grab her. Now, pull it. There, I got her. Well, she ain't so much like a tiger this time. Hold her, Gardo. Let me look at her. Sure, Chief. Go ahead. Hmm. She's fainted, Gardo. Perhaps she heard us coming. Or it may have been up all there in here. Yeah, yeah. This air is terrible. It's enough to make anyone pass out. There's no ventilation in here, Gardo. It is damp and gas is falling. Yeah. Well, what do we do with her? We will see about that in a moment. She might come to any second, so hold her while I see what she was doing here. Right. Like she was looking in that chest. Yes, so I saw. Well, we will soon know what she was looking at. Yeah. Hey, look, Chief, in that tray. There's a piece of paper. Yes. Just a piece of paper and nothing else. It must be very, very interesting, Gardo. I will look at it in the light of the candle. Yeah. Well, what do you make of it, Chief? When I first saw the chest, Gardo, I thought perhaps a parade of treasure was here. But it is not. It ain't, huh? Well, as soon as this dame comes to, we'll get it out of her. This paper, Gardo, is a chart. And there never was a chart or map yet the secret of which Ivan Shark could not find. What's the chart of, Chief? I will have to study it more carefully, Gardo. But I believe it will show the location of the Parada treasure. Well, will Ivan Shark be able to find the secret which Dolores Parada has so jealously guarded from him? And now that Chuck Ramsey has been rescued from his dangerous predicament, what will Captain Midnight's next move be? At the foot of the falls lies the old Aztec Temple. And this old temple will play a mysterious and strange part in coming adventures. Don't miss them. Tune in tomorrow to Captain at Night. Now, just a word, but a very important one. When you go over to your Skelly service station with mother or dad to get your free bag of Mexican jumping beans and your free Ringo Jumbo game, just remember this. There's cool weather ahead, lots of it, and it's time to change over to winter oil. So why not suggest changing over to free-flowing, long-lasting Skelly Tagoline winter oil? It's made to stand the abuse, and it's guaranteed. Tagoline winter oil is tailor-made for easy starting in colder weather and for safe, instant lubrication of the vital moving parts of your car's motor. Change over now to Skelly Tagoline winter oil. It's cheaper to prepare than repair. Now, don't forget to tune in again tomorrow... Same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight. Brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Will Ivan Shark succeed in getting the Parada treasure? Or can Captain Midnight and Senor Parada foil the villain in time? And what about the Aztec Temple? Be sure to listen tomorrow. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your Skelly Man, saying goodbye and... Happy Friday!